In this video, you're gonna learn how to create your very first project in Descript in 20 minutes or less. Let's do it. So over here in our project, this is the first page you have when you open up Descript. This is your workspace view. And the first thing you're gonna do when you start a project is go to new, hit this new button right here. And for the sake of this video, we're gonna do a video project, but you can also do an audio project, which would be if you're just doing a podcast, there's no visual component to it. Quick recording, which is like a Loom video, or remote recording, which is if you want to do a podcast interview remotely. But again, let's do video project. And we are now inside of our project. To familiarize you with what's going on here, on the left side, we have what's called our scene thumbnails. This will make sense in a moment once we start adding scenes. Here in the middle, the middle left, we have our transcription section. And the transcription section is where when we add a video, Descript's automatically gonna transcribe it and it's gonna go right here and it's gonna look like a Word doc. Here on the right of that is our canvas. The canvas is where we do our editing. This is where we can see the frame that we are currently editing and where our video will preview when we go to play it. And to the right of that is our properties panel. Right now it's empty, we don't have anything selected, so there are no properties to manipulate, but you'll see this in a moment once we start adding video. So the very first thing you can do is right here where it says untitled, you have a blinking cursor, and this is where you can name your project. So let's just call this January 2024 tutorial. Hit enter or click down in the space below, and you can start writing, you can put a script in here, you can add a video, you can drag media into here, you can do whatever you want, but we're gonna, for the sake of this tutorial, do a recording. So go ahead, when you click down into here, into the transcript section, hit this record button. And you can see there is a camera option, audio only, or screen and audio. Let's go ahead and do the camera option. And below that, you have settings. You can use your computer audio, which this is the, the audio that is going to be coming through your computer. So if you're playing, for example, a YouTube video, like you're watching right now, then this would capture that audio. Right now it's toggled off, but if I clicked on that speaker, it'll toggle it on. Right now, this is the camera that I'm using. You can use the built-in FaceTime camera if you're on a Mac, or if you have other cameras, external cameras, this is where you would select that, or you can turn it off if you only want to record your screen. I'm gonna go ahead and record my camera. You can choose whether to display your screen or not. And again, you can toggle here as well on the top. And so I'm gonna go ahead and display my screen. And then you can choose which microphone to use. You can use your, your computer's built-in microphone, or if you have an external microphone like I do, this black one right here, it's called the Rode NT-USB Mini. It's a great microphone, by the way. You can select that. You can select the speaker, and this is later on if you want to use an AI speaker, which will use text-to-speech technology, then this is where you can select that, and there's a separate process for training that video. I've done videos about that in the past. This is me, so I'm gonna select my name. You can change any other settings here. If you want it to automatically apply studio sound, studio sound is Descript's feature where it'll automatically edit your videos audio to make it sound like you're recording in a professional studio, or if you want it to transcribe it or not, you can toggle that on and off. Once you've got that all set up how you want, you can record into script. So go ahead and click that button. And it's gonna give you one more prompt to drag your mouse to record part of the screen, or if you press the space bar, it'll record the full screen. So I'm just gonna record uh, a portion of my screen. Let's do right here. It prompts me one more time with that little red button that says start recording. I'm gonna go ahead and hit that. Okay, and right after I hit the stop button, there's actually a little bit of a glitch because I was double recording. I was recording this tutorial and then I was recording the sample that I just showed you. So Descript glitched out, but I'm back. So be aware of that. If you have two recordings going one on top of the other, it might cause issues with Descript. Into our tutorial, this is the video we just recorded. And as you can see, as soon as I hit stop recording, that transcription automatically happened. So Descript's AI takes care of that. And in any normal workflow, the first thing you might do is use some of the AI tools to help you correct this. So right here at the top where it says actions, you can click on that. And the first thing I would do is remove filler words. 
this thing right here. And when you click on it, here's what it's looking for. If you click that all filler words button, it's currently looking for repeated words. So this is times where I said a word multiple times, maybe while I was thinking, and it's looking for, but you know, hmm, ums, uh, well, you know. So things like that, that don't add anything to your script, you can automatically look for those and have Descript remove them. I actually only had one, it was a repeated word. And then the thing that it found is right here. So that's a good correction. I'm gonna take that out. I repeated they twice while I was thinking. And so I'm just gonna hit remove and it's gone. And if you noticed that filler word was highlighted in orange on the transcript to draw my attention to it. I got the filler words out. The next thing I would do is shorten word gaps. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on that. And right now it's looking for a word gap of six seconds or more, but I can change this to anything I want. So I'm gonna do 0.5 by typing in period five. Now it's looking for gaps of 5, 0.5 seconds or more. It found two and I have the option to shorten it to whatever I set it to. Let me shorten this to 0.2 seconds. So it's a very short pause instead of a half second pause. And then once again, on the right side, we can see where those moments are that it found. One is right at the beginning. You see that timestamp? It's also noted on my transcript with these four dots. So if I click on it, it plays it and it is a long pause. There's something called the millennial pause, which is millennials have this tendency to put a pause at the beginning of their videos. Um, and it's kind of a way that Gen Z makes fun of us. So let's go ahead and hit that shorten. And notice there's also an option to shorten all. So if I had a bunch of pauses over here, I could just simply with the click of a button, shorten all of those. But I'm just gonna hit shorten and that pause is gone. Okay, the next thing I would do in my workflow is click inside of here on the canvas and go to the studio sound button and toggle this on. And you can see this little spinning dot that's letting me know that it's processing. And this is happening on Descript's cloud. It uses a lot of Descript servers to do this heavy lifting. The next thing I'm gonna do is click on my webcam in the bottom left. And this is a separate layer. So I have my screen recording layer and I have my webcam layer. These are separate layers. So what I can do is go to effects, hit this plus button, hit green screen, and you can see this little toast that says applying green screen and it's got that spinning circle to let me know that it's applying. I'm just gonna hit this X to dismiss that notification. And then I'm gonna go back to this plus button and I'm gonna go to eye contact. Eye contact is a beta feature, but what it does is it uses AI to make it look like you're looking at the camera even when you're not. So this is really useful for if you have a teleprompter then you can make it look like you're looking straight at the camera instead of reading something or looking somewhere else. Once again, I'm gonna dismiss these toasts. And you can see my, my green screen is gone. And another way, it's, it's pretty small right now. So a way that I can make this bigger is right here in the top right, I can click on this little square button. And now I can get a full screen view to see that everything looks how I want it to and I can resize things, adjust things. So I'm actually gonna make this a little bigger. I'm just gonna click the corner of that layer and resize it like so. And then I'm gonna push me back into the corner by just clicking and dragging it. So it's like PowerPoint. You just move things around, you can move layers around, reposition layers, just like that. And to go back to my, my editing view, I can click on that shrink canvas once again. And there we go, now it's small again. With all of these windows, you can put your mouse between them and resize them like so. And to continue our terminology, on the bottom here, this is our timeline. This is the layer, the script layer of our video. And then you have a back button, a play button, and a next button. Let's go back to the beginning and play it. All right, and the studio sound is a little bit strong. It's kind of uh, robotic sounding, which happens. So if you click on the layer with the audio, which in this case is my webcam layer, I can click on these dials, the effect settings next to studio sound, and I can turn the intensity down. So let me bump this down to 85. And this is all you can do. This is the only setting you can manipulate with studio sound. And you'll wanna play around with it until you find the one that works for your particular microphone setup. 
So I happen to know with this microphone that 85% on the studio sound works really well. Now, the other thing I like to do is back in audio effects, I hit the plus button, I go to dynamics, and I go to compressor. And then under compressor, effect settings, this little, the little dial icon there, go to this drop down, and I hit classic voiceover. And classic voiceover is a default setting that is really good for voiceovers. And then if you wanted to, you could change each of these individually. I just like to use the presets. And let's see how it sounds. All right, sounds pretty good. I'm happy with that. So the next thing I would do is just go ahead and go through the transcript and cut out things that I don't need, that is unnecessary, and just start cutting down, refining my video to the parts that I'm actually gonna publish. So I can get rid of this part that says, and we're live, all right, this is my video, welcome to the January 2024. So I'm just gonna cut everything before welcome to January 2024. And to do that, I can click in on the words themselves and highlight it. I can, once it's highlighted, I can hit the delete button and it's gone. But I'm gonna undo that with Command Z. And the better way to do it is instead of deleting, hit this ignore button. And ignore strikes it out, but it, it keeps it on your transcript, on your transcript, so you're aware that it's there, but it gets rid of it on the timeline. So it's no longer in my video. Now, the reason that this is a recommended workflow is because it maintains my awareness that it's there. I can bring it back if I want. If there's some words I've mistakenly gotten rid of, I can simply bring that back. So here's what it looks like now. It starts right off the bat with that welcome to the 2024 tutorial. And now I mentioned scenes earlier. Scenes are the smaller unit of our video. So to add a scene, I can hit the, I can move my timeline, my playhead to somewhere on, somewhere where I wanna create a new scene. So if you see where my mouse is, this blue line, I'm gonna hit the forward slash button on my keyboard. And now I have a scene two and scene one. And also if you look over here on the left, scene one, scene two. So this is how you can split up your video and whatever effects you apply to a scene will apply to that entire scene and that scene only. So let's say I wanted scene one to be more zoomed in. I can do that. I can resize it on scene one. And then if I look at scene two, it's back to the previous setting because those are separate scenes. The settings did not apply to both scenes. But what I wanna do is in scene one, I say, welcome to January 2024 tutorial. I could add a title, for example, with this T in the top middle. I go to title and then Again, it's like PowerPoint. You have this text option here with the title selected. You can change the font. Let's change it to man rope. You can change the weight. I'm gonna go extra bold. You can change the size. I'm gonna leave it at 200. You can do left align, center align, right align, etc. all caps or standard case. And then you can change the color. I'm gonna make this blue so I can see it a little bit better. And I'm gonna say, Click in there again and write January. Okay, it's so big that it doesn't even fit inside of there. So let me bump this down to like 85. January 2024 tutorial. Very good. Okay, and once again, I applied this title inside of scene one. So you can see here, this layer is my title layer. It's only inside of scene one. It does not flow over into scene two. Okay, let me start over. I'm gonna hit the back button and hit the play button. Just like that. Now, the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna get rid of this layer, the, uh, the screen here, because I don't need it yet. So if I click on the layer, you can tell something's selected when you have the white dots on the corners and the purple bar on the outside. I'm gonna go ahead and make that disappear. So right here where the opacity is, first of all, I can click and I can slide and assign it a percentage. So if it's 50% opaque, it's 50% black, 50% visible. But if you click this eye, eye thing there, it'll actually make it disappear. And now it's completely gone. And all you see is me and that title layer. And if you click outside of those layers, if you click into the gray here, you can actually set a background color. So you can hit this plus button and then you can change the color. Let's make it, let's make it, uh, Blue, light blue like that. Yeah, very good. 
make it a little bit lighter blue so it contrasts with the title. There we go. Very good. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is add a transition. And transitions, if you click this plus button, you have two choices. You have an in and an out. The in is what this video will transition at the beginning of the scene. And the out is what it'll do at the end of the scene. So my favorite transition is this one called cross zoom. So let me go ahead and play it and you can see how it looks. I'm going to resize the screen and hit play. One more time. So it does that zoom in and swish around type of thing. So let me go back to scene one, go to the effect settings of cross zoom. Right now it's a one second zoom. So it's pretty slow and exaggerated. I like to do 0.4 seconds, so just under half a second. You can also change the amount, so how dramatic that blur is gonna be. I leave it at 200%, that's just fine. And let's hit play. All right, so cool. It adds a, a, that transition, so it's not as jumpy going into the second scene. And the next thing I'm gonna do is add a sound effect to that. So if I go to the media bin, Click on that, the, the media bin at the top left. The first page we come to is our files page. And this is where all of our files are held. If you add your own files or record your own files, as I did in this case, it'll all be held here. So right now I have a HD camera file, that's my webcam, and I have a screen file. So those are te separate video files. But you can also bring in files that you've recorded previously, maybe with a your iPhone or some other camera, you can drag that file off of your computer and drop it into here. Or you can click this add files button and browse around your computer and find those files and bring it in that way. Next, we have the videos file. These are Descript's stock video files. We have GIFs. These are like memes that you can add. There are images. These are stock still images from Unsplash. And for our sake, there's audio. You have music and you have sound effects. The sound effect I like to use with that transition is called whip whoosh. So if I type in whip whoosh, there it is, whip whoosh heavy. You can hit this play button to preview it, or you can just click on the word itself anywhere in this gray bar and it'll add that to your track. And it adds it by default to wherever my playhead is on the timeline. But I'm gonna go ahead and zoom in by holding Command and using my scroll wheel to zoom in. And then I take this audio file and I position it right between the two, the two scenes, right where my transition happens. So let's play it. There we go. That's a nice little transition there. Okay, we're now at time for the 20 minute tutorial. So I'm gonna wrap this up by showing you how to publish it. But if you wanna watch longer ones, I have everything from a 15 minute tutorial all the way up to two and a half hour tutorials on this channel. So go ahead, navigate to my channel page or check the links in the description and you can find links to those longer tutorials. But let's go ahead and talk about publishing. So to finish up your project and publish it or export it to your computer, you find this publish button at the top right, click on that and you have two options, export, which will put it on your hard drive and you have by default the video which will allow you to export the video or you can choose audio, GIF, timeline, transcript, subtitles. But we're gonna do video. You can choose whether to do just the current composition, multiple compositions, just the current scene, et cetera. But we're just gonna use the current composition which refers to our whole project here. The resolution, if you want it to be at 1080p or less, you can choose that. The quality of the audio, low, medium, high. And then when you're ready, you hit export. Now publish is when you publish it somewhere on the internet. By default, it publishes to Weblink. This is Descript's cloud. So this will generate a URL for your video where you can send that, you can share that link with somebody and they can see your video. If you click that dropdown, there is a YouTube option or you can choose different podcast hosts and publish to those locations. And when you're ready, you click publish. So that's it. This was a quick, very quick 20 minute tutorial. Again, if you wanna go deeper, I have a course and I have more tutorials on this channel. Thanks for watching, bye.